friends, welcome back to my kitchen where everything is scratch made and home preserved. I'm Jenny, if you're new here, welcome. And welcome to Marching In With Casseroles. This is a collab put on by my good friend Greg from Greg's Cumberlatcha Kitchen. All through the month of March, there will be casserole recipes for you because who doesn't like a good casserole? I will put all of the collaborators as well as the playlist in the description box below for you. You're going to want to go check out all those recipes to get some great ideas. Today is actually St. Patrick's Day as I'm filming this and I'm of course making corned beef and cabbage and that isn't something that my daughter will eat and it is family day and she is here. So I am going to be making a chicken cottage pie. Super easy, not a ton of ingredients and we're going to do the potatoes a little bit differently so pull a chair up to my counter and let's get started. Okay, for this cottage pie, I actually am going to use my home canned chicken. This is actually my cottage pie filling. I will link this in the description box below if you're interested, but you don't have to have this. This is ground dark meat chicken, and the vegetables in it is, is the frozen mixed vegetables. Or you can use a can of veg all. That works as well. And we're going to be using red potatoes. First thing I want to do is um, take care of my potatoes. You're going to want about six medium-ish red potatoes. Got a bowl right here. So all I'm going to do is give these red potatoes a slice about a quarter inch thick. You could go up to half inch if you like. Quarter inch to half inch. We're not, we're not making fried potatoes here. FYI, you can peel these potatoes if you prefer them peeled. I'm just leaving the peels on to save time. I've got a stick of butter. I'm going to actually cut it in half. And I'm going to melt half of it, which is four tablespoons. In the potatoes, you want to put most of the butter. I'm going to leave just a little bit out to brush the top with. And then you can season them any way you like. I am going to put a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper. You can put whatever you like in there for seasoning. Toss them around, get the butter and the seasoning mixed in with everything. You want your potatoes to have flavor. And since we're not putting any cream or cheese, I'm keeping these dairy free other than the butter. I'm going to set that aside until I'm ready. And this is my iron skill that's going to go into the oven. I'm going to set my oven at 375 degrees. In the meantime, I've got about a tablespoon and a half of butter in there. I'm going to make a roux. While that is melting, I am going to get my jar open, and this is a this is a Tatler lid. I do use Tatlers and Golden Harvest as well. They have a special opener, so these are reusable lids if you have not seen them yet. Um, but you will see this filling if you watch it. So all I want to do is thicken this up with a gravy. So we're making the roux to make a gravy with that and because it is dark meat it does have a layer of fat in there as well which is good you want that in your gravy fat means it has flavor if you don't have a jar of this and you're not interested in canning it you can just brown up some chicken some ground chicken whether it's dark meat or white meat it doesn't matter then you can add flour to your browned meat to make a roux and then put in some chicken broth and then after you put your chicken broth in you can add a can of veg all or frozen vegetables you just want to brown your roux slightly this does not need to be a dark roux we 
just want to cook the flour taste out. We're just looking to thicken it here. But if you want to cook it a little bit longer and get a nice dark roux with a nutty flavor, you certainly can. Your kitchen, your rules, man. Also, feel free to use any vegetable you like. If you don't like the frozen vegetables or veg all and you want to use your own home canned vegetables, go ahead. Okay, this is about a medium brown. I'm going to go ahead and add this in. My mixture here has peas, corn, carrots. And I put onions in it as well. So just stir it and cook it until it thickens. Of course, I'm going to add just a smidge more flavor. I'm going to add a little bit of onion powder because it makes all gravy taste better. Black pepper. And a little bit of sea salt. turn that off since I'm going to be putting this into the oven. So instead of having mashed potatoes, we have these delicious seasoned potatoes to go on top. You can use olive oil if you prefer, over butter, a mixture, coconut oil, whatever you like. You can put herbs in here. Fresh thyme would be really good in here. I'm kind of doubling up on the layer of potatoes. You don't have to do this. You could use three potatoes and have more than enough. We just really like potatoes in this house. You could also do a mixture of potato and onion. You could do sweet potato on here. There are no hard and fast rules. I'm going to put on the last little bit of butter over the top. Sprinkle with some Hungarian paprika. I'm going to put this in the oven until it's done, until these potatoes are tender. So 30 to 45 minutes. We'll see. I'll let you know exactly how long it took. Okay, the um, cottage pie is done. So this is a skillet cottage pie. The potatoes are tender. You can cover this whole thing with foil, aluminum foil, to keep it from browning, or you can bake it uncovered like I did so you get a little brown on the top of the potatoes. This took 30 minutes at 375 degrees. Mina's gonna do a taste test for you. <laughs> Really good. 
There's a really rich flavor to it. Super quick and easy to put together as well. It's perfect. Happy St. Patty's Day. <laughs> okay, that is all there is to the quick, easy skillet chicken cottage pie. Super yummy, easy to put together, and good any time of year. Anyway, I sure hope you enjoyed the recipe. Don't forget to go to everybody else's channel and check out what they're cooking up for casseroles. Any time of year, casseroles are always a good idea. Anyway, friends. Greg will be doing a giveaway on his channel, on his Greg's Cumberlatchet Kitchen channel at the end. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like videos like these, please consider subscribing. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog at JennyGoff.com for all of my recipes, including this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.